a people's struggle for rights. The civil rights movement was highly effective but did not end the problem of racism. African Americans come from a past of slavery. After slavery ended African Americans realized they were not completely out of the woods. Segregation was in full swing. So was racial attacks and hatred toward African Americans. Emmett Till was abducted and murdered because they claimed that he whistled at a Caucasian lady. September 4, 1957 Blacks attempted to integrate in Little Rock, Arkansas Central High School amidst angry protesters and were finally admitted under the protection of the National Guard on September 25, 1957. These are a couple of the events that led to the Civil Rights Movement. There were many protests of black students demanding to be served at whites-only lunch counters. They were arrested and beaten all for the result of equality. Many African Americans were against integration claiming blacks should have a separate identity. This group became known officially as black nationalist. Black nationalism took hold in the 1960s and helped to fuel the movement, inciting the black community to fight for their rights. An example of one of these groups was called the Black Panthers. You can't exactly know what an African American was thinking in the late 50s and early 60s but I'm sure they only wanted equal rights. Individual incidences of protest rapidly grew into a movement that would bring civil rights to an oppressed people. Civil rights leaders and support for the growing movement emerged in the early 1960s. Leaders such as Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King and Stokely Carmichael all risked their lives and livelihoods for the cause of freedom for African Americans. Great writers were recognized like W.E.B. Du Bois, Laron Bennett Jr., Nathan Wright Jr., Langston Hughes and Eldridge Cleaver to name a few. They spoke up in public places, led marches and peaceful protests, worked tirelessly as activists whose goal was to change a society, such as the Freedom Riders. They challenged the mores of a segregated society by performing an alarmingly simple act, traveling together in small interracial groups. They sat where they pleased on buses and trains and demanded unrestricted access to terminal restaurants and waiting rooms, even in the Deep South where such behavior was forbidden by law and custom. Arsenal too. They were met with the tumult of angry mobs and even violence. On that day they told the world that life in America would have to change. Also I am happy to say, the Freedom Rides was an undertaking that Caucasians participated in because they wanted to see a change for the better. They willingly experienced the hatred and torment for the good of the people. In the words of Stokely Carmichael when he spoke about the protest said, What could be more harmless, in any even marginally healthy society? As quoted in Orson Alt 1, the issue of civil rights in the 1960s and today is more than just an African American problem. It's actually found to be a problem in many countries around the world. Anywhere the dark-skinned, light-skinned dichotomy exists there is a system of racial subjugation in place. For example India has the caste system based on the lighter-skinned people called Brahmins ruling the darker-skinned people also known as Dravidians. In America the movement was called the Civil Rights Movement as opposed to the Rights for Black People Movement. That's because the issue affects every human being on the planet and not just African Americans. Stokely Carmichael was probably the leading voice in this matter who said, Politically we want the black people of America to free themselves from their oppression. We also want the people of the third world to get their freedom, especially the people of Asia, Africa and Latin America, because we know our liberation depends on their liberation and that, vice versa, their liberation depends on ours. Therefore we must carry out the same struggle. Nelson 5. The civil rights movement enjoyed many achievements despite fierce opposition. The movement definitely changed the thinking of the public mindset of the country which in itself was a victory. In addition African Americans reaped better job opportunities, political accomplishments, acceptance to accredited universities and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ensured public restrictions were lifted. I am absolutely shocked that I saw it in my lifetime but we actually elected the first African American President of the United States. I can tell my grandchildren, someday, that I voted for him. It was not just a victory for African Americans but the entire world. It was also a symbol of the change that every human being craves. I find it fascinating that the first African American President was conceived at the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. Barack Obama was born in 1961. 
He also became the first African-American president of the Harvard Law Review in 1991, Smith 155-57. I hope his example has a good effect on the youth of the African-American community. Inner-city African-American youth face many obstacles today despite the civil rights movement. All African-Americans face racism. A man was recently drugged by a car in the South for apparently just being a dark-skinned person. At Michigan State University a hanging black doll was found in a university chemistry laboratory. Racism rocks Michigan State University campus. Par 1. When I heard about these things in the news I was not surprised. Growing up in the United States in this day and age some African Americans have learned to ignore the ignorance. Which is why someone can get shot in our neighborhood and it seems no one demands retribution. They don't rally the people and let the criminals understand they can't do this because they aren't hurting anyone but themselves. I understand that the things I speak of are not an easy task and are a lot easier said than done. People just wake up the next morning and move on with their lives. They are completely within their rights to do so but that doesn't make it the right thing to do. It seems as though the entire city is feigning indifference toward our own neighborhoods in the inner city especially among the youth of the community. Certain African Americans face terrifying obstacles of drugs and gangs that ultimately led to imprisonment or death, especially in the so-called ghetto. They also face closing schools and closing youth programs which are supposed to keep them off the street and out of trouble. It is a matter of belief but I believe the aforementioned troubles we face are products of modern-day racism. It's puzzling how you could find a middle-class African American in the inner city that lives exceptionally and on the same street find the dregs of society. But the black condition in America is a two-sided coin. Even as half the blacks sink deeper into poverty and despair, the other half are realizing the American dream. Millions of black Americans, by dint of hard work, courage is persistence in the face of racism, and the aid of affirmative action laws have steadily developed into a black middle class. Archer 225 Noted writers and doctors of philosophy have written about theories claiming white supremacy, racism, to be a disease that quite possibly has a cure. These include Dr. Francis Cress Welsing who wrote a book named The Isis Papers. Hubert G. Locke wrote The Care and Feeding of White Liberals. These books discuss this topic in detail calling racism a psychological disease. White racism is a psychological disease that afflicts a full 98% of all Caucasoids living today. Lock 1. Dr. Francis Cress Welsing focused more on the effects of white supremacy and the cause of the civil rights movement, impressed that the concept of a system of white domination over the world's non-white population could explain the seeming predicament and dilemma of non-white social reality. Welsing 3. These quotes can apply to today's problems and problems from the 1960s. Some modern-day racism facing African Americans today is a, especially males can hardly go to the corner store without someone watching them to see if they will steal something. You ain't gotta be creeping. I don't know why you trying to act like you cleaning up. Shit. Damn. I always think we're gonna steal something. What you want, dog? When they drive a car in a white neighborhood 70% of the time we are pulled over by policemen and the procedure is called routine. Most of the time it is law-abiding citizens that are the victims of this type of control. African Americans also face a dismal employment situation. Lots of African Americans, especially in Michigan, are forced to apply at temporary service companies for jobs when the majority of them are looking for full-time employment. When people do get jobs, especially in Flint, they are forced to commute 30 to 40 miles outside the city to work in a Caucasian-dominated city. In conclusion I would like to say that we as African Americans need to pay more attention to our past, for it is our greatest guide for the future. On August 28, 1963, Martin Luther King led the March on Washington with the message of uniting all the people in this society. This was an amazing featuring because it helped to mend racial tensions among the inhabitants of the United States of America. The civil rights movement was highly effective but did not end the problem of racism and in a lot of ways is still ongoing. Who knows if the problem of racism can ever be resolved. As an African American living in post-civil rights movement America, I personally experience racism on a day-to-day -day basis. That's one of the reasons I chose to study and report on this topic.
In the process I was reminded about how far we as a people have come and also reminded about how far we as a people must go. Thank you for watching, and please, like and subscribe.